So in this video, we're gonna look at how to use Excel to generate a point estimation, uh, to calculate point estimation and calculate interval estimation. So before we look at our Excel file, and make sure you have the slides ready, because what we're gonna look at is, we're gonna want to estimate what is the point estimate for the customer who, uh, who uh, the spar the, the spar that have a five column interest advertisement on the newspaper and give the new member $75 discount. So we try to predict on average how many new members uh, they will have. So uh, after that, we're going to look at what will be the 95% confidence interval for the average consumer customer they will gain if all the clubs uh, give five column interest and $75 discount. And then we're going to look at the prediction interval if one club decide to give five column uh, put a five column interest advertisement and offer $75 discount. So for that club, uh, what is going to be the prediction interval? So we're going to do point estimation and uh, uh, con uh, con the interval estimation. So the data set we need is uh, still the same one. So make sure you still have this output. And if you don't have it, make sure you watch the previous video teaching you how to gather the output for the multiple linear regression model. So given this is the model we have and the outcome we generated, so now we're going to try to calculate point estimate. So first we're going to record the value of the value for x1 and x2. So after reading the case, we know this bar club is going to uh, put a, uh, the ads on the newspaper. So the ad on the newspaper will be uh, five column inches. So the value for X1 will be five. And then the number the discount fee they give is 75. So now we try to predict the point estimation, which is Y hat. So on the slides is Y hat start, right? So basically what we did in that question is We just plug in the 5 and the center 5 back to the equation we estimate. This is B0, B1, B2. So now we're going to look at our values equal to B0 plus B1 times the value of X1 plus B2 times value of X2. And then push enter. So this is 24.5898. So that's the answer you uh, see there. A little bit different. And uh, so the next, we, uh, the reason we have a little bit different because when we are doing the calculation here, I actually rounded the number. So that's why you see the huge difference. And so, uh, not huge, a little bit different. But again, I prefer to use Excel to do the calculation and running the result at the end. So the difference between this result and the result on your handout is because the running arrow, so running arrow. So now, next we're gonna look at is calculate prediction and confidence interval. So confidence interval, we're gonna use this formula to calculate. So we need the value for T, we need the value for uh, the standard error and the value for sample size, so confidence interval. And for the prediction interval, we need a T and SE. Remember, Y hat star is my point estimate, which we already got it. So now let's see, the first value we need is the T statistic. So the formula we use is called a T I and V. And so this is one word, T I and V, and parenthesis 0.05. And then DF residual, so the same method we use in the simple neural regression model. DF residual, so we select DF residual and close the parenthesis. So that's the T value we need. And then the second value is the SE. So if you look at the formula, we need the value for SE, right? S, um, SE. So where's SE? So the same location. I just try to move everything in the same area so that I can easily to calculate. So the SE is the standard error in the table of regression analysis. So I select that value, push enter. And the last one I need is value for N, the sample size. So the sample size is right under the uh, standard error. So here is eight. So you don't need to select the value actually because the observation always be integer. So you can just type in eight. So now, uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to calculate the lower boundary for confidence interval and then upper uh, boundary for confidence interval. And after that, we're going to calculate the lower boundary uh, for the prediction interval and then upper boundary for the prediction interval. So now we're going to revisit the formula again. So you can write it down actually so that you don't need to let me to back forth. So y hat plus minus 
uh, teach that as e divided by s n, uh, standard, square root of n. So this is a confidence interval. And the prediction interval, you just don't need to divide by square root of n. So let's do it together. <clears throat> So the L, the lower boundary of the confidence interval mean of y equal to the value of the y hat. So it's lower boundary, that's why we chose minus sign, minus t statistics times the standard error divided by, do you remember the square root of n? Square root, S-Q-R-T. So that's the formula, you shouldn't forget about it. So square root of n, close the parenthesis, push enter. So you got 21.5226. So that's the lower boundary. And the upper boundary will be very similar. You're going to just change the minus sign to plus. So it will be the y hat start plus, so not minus anymore, and t statistics times se divided by sqrt, and the parentheses, the square root of n, so n. Right? And the square root of n, so after you did that, and then you can push enter. So this is the upper boundary of the confidence interval, right? So now we're going to do the prediction interval, lower boundary prediction interval. Very similar, y hat minus t statistics times sc, no more divided by, because this is prediction interval, and push enter, and then the upper boundary equal to t stats plus a uh, y hat plus sorry y hat plus uh, t stats times se. So now you've got upper boundary for this case. So obviously, students gonna say I love the multiple regression model. Uh, yes, of course, because this calculation is much easier compared with the simple linear regression model. So that's the end of this video.